658 entries, 432 business essential training sessions, and 1,920 hours of one-on-one -on -one business advisor support all come down to this moment. Today, the 600 that became 60 and now 20 will be cut down to 10, then 5, and then 1. Hi, I'm Team Sumuko, and you are watching the final episode of the Game Plan Show 2016. So far, we have seen 15 of the 20 pitches, which leaves us with just 5 more pitches before the bench decides who takes it all. But before we hear from the last of our contestants, here's a quick reminder of what took place in our last two episodes and the judges who ultimately make the final decision. Our business is to provide young working mothers a safe place to leave their children for care and learning. So why should I trust my children to be cared for for the maids who you appear to be training for only about two weeks? We've been in existence for the past six years. We publish education materials, academic books. Why can't you get a bank loan? Collateral. It's been a problem. Why are you doing oyster mushrooms when I think there's a, quite a lot on the market and it's only 2% of your product mix? My plan is to supply village chicken on a commercial level uh, by supplying it as a dressed packaged chicken. There's no way it shows where you are going to get this money. You're not running the, a business right now. My business is tutoring services. I've been offering academic assistance successfully to invest of Zambia students in natural sciences, engineering, and economics. I'm not sure what is innovative about your business. You're basically set, setting up a university to teach university students. So, those are the people who have the hard task of selecting who among the 20 will make it to the top five. But before they can get to that, they still have to hear from our final contestants. Up first, we have Aquaculture Startup Proposal courtesy of James. Well, uh, my idea was inspired by uh, the fact that, first of all, I'm uh, fascinated by fish, I've always been fascinated by fish, and uh, there is a very great demand uh, for fish, and the, the deficit in the supply. My business idea uh, involves integrated fish farming, that is uh, calm duck fish farming. Uh, this takes advantage of a symbiotic relationship between duck and fish uh, by uh, letting the organic manure of the duck get washed out into the ponds, helping nourish the ponds. Um, I plan on starting by digging uh, six fish ponds in Fanyama district of the Copper Belt and uh, expanding in the third year of operation, digging three more ponds in the fifth year four more points, thereby bringing the total number to about 13 points by the end of five years. Uh, the current uh, demand for fish in the country is about 120,000 tons of fish, but the current local production is only about 70,000 tons, thereby leading to a deficit of about 50,000 tons, uh, especially on the copper belt. And uh, there are a few uh, major suppliers of fish on the copper belt, including uh, Lake Harvest and Pende Fisheries, which is based in, in Dollar. Uh, the reason why there's a high deficit of, of fish is because of uh, the high, uh, high because uh, fish farming is very capital intensive, and which is the major reason why I need the the, 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 the seed from Yamukazami in order for me to kickstart my entrepreneurial venture. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, judges. Over to you. Have, have you seen this project working before? Uh, Apart from on YouTube. No. <laughs> not, not on a commercial scale. I've, the only experience that I've, ha I've had is on a domestic fish pond. James, you just came here with an idea. You've never done this before. You have no experience in doing this. You have never seen it anywhere done commercially. You are not putting in any of your money. You want all the money to come from Nyamuka, Zambia. If I'm an investor, why should I invest in your business venture? Uh, well, you are not taking a risk yourself and you have no experience. Well, I, I do have a bit of experience, though not a commercial, commercial scale. And I, I'm, I'm very driven, I'm very focused on, on this project. Yeah, this is what I want to do. Okay, judges, I think um, your time is up. Uh, thank you for your pitch. You are free to leave the room now. Thank you. 
All right, so what were the judges like? What was the experience? Are you walking away a winner? Well, we just have to wait and see, but the judges, the judges weren't kind at all. <laughs> it's at all. big money you're playing and, for, but do you think you're getting it? Uh, yeah, according to me, my dear, mm -hmm. I feel, I feel I'm getting it. Though the judges were not friendly, and I was quite nervous, so my legs were actually trembling. <laughs> though I couldn't see it, though <laughs> I was shaking. All right, well, all the best. You can stop the shaking for now, all right? <laughs> okay. But the waiting begins where the shaking stops. Up next is Musonda Kabamba with an e-learning concept. Will it sit well with the judges? Let's find out. Um, I think what makes my idea different from uh, the other contestants is uh, I think it has uh, one of the largest uh, social impacts. I mean, I'm developing software applications targeted at primary uh, school pupils as well as secondary school pupils. Uh, I am a software developer by profession. I am currently developing educational software applications capable of running on multiple devices such as smartphones, tablets, and personal computers. These uh, software applications will comprise of notes and video tutorials in line with the Zambian curriculum and will be distributed on uh, USB flash drives and micro SD cards. So initially the business will target primary and secondary school pupils and uh, later reach out to higher education students like the college and university students over the coming years. I believe uh, this project is, is feasible and will be a success because uh, it will uh, be very beneficial to a number of people, especially adult scholars and school pupils who are unable to attend uh, class. Uh, for example, adult scholars who, cannot, uh, who are busy working and do not have the time to go to, to class and uh, or time to visit a private tutor. Thank you. Musonda, I have a question for you. You talked about the adult scholars. Yes, please. Uh, so I'm looking at your platform, I'm thinking it's maybe people who dropped out grade 9, grade 10 and they're trying to finish their secondary. Yes, please. Will it be affordable for them? Yes, um, my, my list price is at 600 quarter, uh, which I believe is very affordable compared to how much they're spending on uh, private tutors. So I'm not going to have to interrupt you there. There's some pretty uh, solid competition already in this market with the educational program, with the hardware. How are you trying to differentiate and compete? Thank you. Um, the main local competitor is uh, distributing educational software on a tablet PC, which is, uh, compared to my price, it's uh, almost three times what, what my, my product's price is. What will be the source of your product? Who will be your suppliers who supply you so cheaply the hardware than the current uh, service providers? Uh, well, I have been negotiating with uh, a company that is uh, manufacturing you have this. You've been machine. negotiating, you haven't negotiated yet, so you don't know what the price will no, be. No, no, they've given me a price. What we are negotiating and yet you want to pursue a price war with uh, people who are a lot more competitive and have economies of scale? Uh, well, it's, it, it all comes down to the Musonda, implementation. you've been saved by the bell. Thank you for your pitch, judges. Uh, thank you for those questions. You're free to leave the room now. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so after that experience, what do you think the chances of you being the grand winner for this competition is? I have pretty good chances. Okay. Now, why do you think that is? Um, I, I think I, I pitched my idea very well. Nothing made you nervous? I was very nervous, yes. <laughs> but uh, initially, I, in the first uh, stages, yes, I was nervous. But later on, I think I got some confidence. All right, well, I'll tell you one thing. You got through the first stages just fine to make it here to the finals. Will you go all the way? We'll wait and see. Best of luck. All right. Someone else looking for a bit of luck is Steve Jobs-inspired author Peter Nawa, who faces the bench right after this break. Success is measured in many ways. Which bank you choose for your business is one of them. Whether you're already established or can see the potential of what could be one day, Barclays Business Banking understands where you want to take your business and what is needed to get you there. A dedicated partner committed to opening doors to growth and success at every stage of your business journey. Open doors. Prosper. Here. 
Network. Upgrade to Zambia's fastest 4G network today. Visit an MTN service center to pick up your 4G SIM card now and get one gigabyte data free. Yamoka Zambia. Welcome back to the show. You're just in time to catch Peter Nawa as he makes his publishing startup pitch. What separates me from the rest of the contestants is my drive and passion for the business I'm in and also entrepreneurship as a general craft and general skill. Publishing companies in Zambia have largely concentrated on publishing textbooks. They have neglected fiction and non-fiction books. This has meant that most writers either have to stop writing or have shelved their manuscripts when they are done. A growing middle class has seen a strong desire for local content in Zambia and internationally, and writers have emerged. The challenges they face is that they can't find the right editors, cover designers, marketing and distribution. These are challenges that I'm all too familiar with as I try to publish my own book, Hired. And that was the birth of Butali Readers and Writers Studio. It is a startup that seeks to help writers and authors navigate a challenging publishing network landscape by guiding them through the editing, marketing, and distribution process. We seek an investment of 250,000 kwacha to go towards working capital, the purchase of computer accessories and furniture, upgrading of a website called zambianbooks.com, which is a platform where writers and authors can use to promote and market their books, as well as a writer's resource. The other will go towards marketing. We do recognize that reading in Zambia needs improving, and therefore a portion of our marketing spend will go towards the promotion of reading. And we shall be perfectly poised to help writers and authors digitize their books. Thank you very much for listening, and I'm happy to answer any questions. You talk about uh, all these uh, stories, and uh, you know, I see a book there, which I, again, I can also commend you for bringing yes. out uh, that. Uh, Everybody is going um, uh, print media and uh, digital. Why are you insisting on a uh, uh, paper, not a digital publication? Yes. So, like I mentioned in the in the in the in the presentation, is that for starters, Zambia is not yet popular with the digital format, but we are actually there, and we can help writers who want that. So you want and to keep them in the, the dark ages, uh, give them paper which they don't read anyway. No, but they can still read because a huge portion of Zambia are not online. The people in the rural areas who are still not yet online and will still prefer a hard copy. And still a hard copy can still lend it to a friend. You can't lend out a And have you looked at the phone. market in terms of uh, affordability, vis-a-vis uh, -vis disposable income, with this much economic times where people have to decide whether to buy a lot of bread or your, or your book? Uh, what volume are you looking at under such conditions? In Zander, we would probably say a good 500 copies of a book would be reasonably successful. To Peter, at that. thank you for the pitch. Thank you. Well, Peter, as a writer, how does this story end after meeting those judges? I hope it ends very well. It, it ends perfectly. I remembered my words. I didn't stutter, so that was quite impressive. No surprises? Well, there were a few quite challenging questions, but I hope I answered the best of my ability. All right. Well, definitely time will tell, and we'll be reading the final chapter very soon. <laughs> all right. So it's been an education there with Peter and we wish him all the best. Certainly, we will be keeping a keen eye on his business. Up next, we have an entrepreneur inspired by Sir Richard Branson, whose idea has the potential to revolutionize the energy sector in Zambia. It's Ushiwa Chikunga. What inspires me is the development of energy, environmental and sustainability solutions that help and improve the livelihoods of Beso Pyramid customers. I'm the founder of Ecological Technologies Limited, a social enterprise whose passion and main focus is the development of energy, environment and sustainability solutions which improve the livelihoods of Beso Pyramid consumers. In Zambia, only 26% of the population is connected to the grid. This presents an opportunity for off-grid solar to become a potentially critical energy access solution. Our business concept is centered on introducing a pay-as-you-go business model for uh, solar home systems, specifically targeted for customers who receive unreliable electricity or are not connected to the national grid. A solar home system is a plug-and-play device that consists of two to five lights, uh, has phone charging ports, um, can play a radio, a TV, or even a fan, depending on the system size or the customer's requirements. The benefits of a solar home system go beyond lighting and improve and include 
improve, uh, increase the hours of doing businesses for small businesses in rural areas, increase the reading time for school going children, safety, and also financial inclusion through the use of mobile money. We require 250,000 kwacha to buy the first 100 systems and uh, for working capital as well. Ushiwa, you said you, are, you will have a web management system that's going to be used to manage the switching on and switching off of the units and you're also going to use a payment solution which in this case is likely to be mobile money. You need software to integrate these two systems and there will be a development cost and how long will it this take? Have you taken into account the development cost and how long it will take to integrate your web management system with the payment solution? We are already in talks with a company called Lumita Networks uh, which provides the web-based management software, which tracks the system, shows us the GPS positioning, and is able to switch off the, 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 the system in case of default. I'm talking about integration. Yes, integration will probably take about uh, two months, as uh, we have discussed with Lumit and they promised us that we will uh, integrate the system within two months. Ushiwa, I have to stop you there. Uh, judges, thank you for your questions, and thank you for your pitch. Ushiwa, you may leave the room now. Thank you. Well, with your industry, do you think you've shed new light to the judges that your idea is the winning one? My idea is both innovative, has growth potential, and is sustainable, and I think it is a winning idea. Okay, expressing a lot of confidence, but if you do not win, what do you think was the hardest part? Uh, probably my pitch, uh, I was breaking up during my pitch, my, 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 my speech wasn't consistent. All right, but you are confident? I am confident. All right, well, all the best. Now we move on to our final contestant of the show, whose business idea could see us reconsidering how we build our homes in the not-so-distant future. It's Papias Banda. Our business innovation is going to lower the cost of living for all Zambians. First of all, for the homeowner, because they're able to build their house quicker and cheaper. Uh, and also for the person who will be living in that house because because of the lower cost they'll be able to rent at a more affordable price. Now while, while shelter is uh, a basic human right it is one of the few that has been uh, taken away uh, from the average Zambian. Because of the high costs and the risks that are involved and the time that it takes most Zambians are put off from building their own structures of high quality. Um, this has led to um, a deficit of over 2 million houses as found by the National Housing Authority in the year 2012. Um, of those 2 million houses, 70% of those were found to be of um, the lower to mid cost houses. Now, this is the target market that we're looking uh, into to provide uh, quick and simple solutions for building. By using frames uh, to create the houses, we'll be able to save up to four times, we'll be able to build four times faster than the market standard. And by using a special mix of uh, concrete, we'll be able to save up to 45% in costs. This is my business plan. Okay, thank you, Papias. Uh, judges, on, over to you. If you're importing some of the raw materials in the machinery, then you, with a volatile exchange rate, uh, long term, it will become very expensive to build a house using your technology compared to me making blocks here at home with the locally procured the raw materials. Don't you think so? Well, actually most of the raw materials that we'll be using are locally found. Um, however, there's only one which is a special addition of which low uh, amounts of it, very little amounts of it are actually uh, used in each unit. However, to balance out that, we'll be using pricing with the US dollar rather than the kwacha to even that out. Will that not make your product expensive like Amon has mentioned, George Amon has mentioned? Because if you're pegging it to the dollar, the price of your product will be as volatile as the currency will be. So with our projections that we've made, we found that you're able to save um, up to 45%. And if we cost uh, the service at 30%, which is what the market standard is, we'll still be able to save um, up to 20%. And most of uh, the people that would afford that uh, uh, type of uh, house, um, uh, you know, will be looking uh, for a stable and uh, habitable uh, place. And that's one of uh, the risks you've uh, pointed out. So how would you make sure that uh, the properties that uh, you build are stable and uh, habitable? So uh, we currently uh, have an agreement with Lafarge uh, for us to do the, our testing before we build any of the structures to make sure that the quality is of the utmost, it's, it's beyond 
the, the regulations and the standards that we have. Okay, thank you, Pat Pearson. Thank you, judges. Um, thank you for your pitch. You are free to leave the room now. Thank you. Thank you. So your idea has to do with building houses, but how do you think you've constructed your dream after meeting those judges? I think it went pretty well. I was a little nervous, but um, as I flowed through it, it kind of just came out. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Okay, all right. Well, there's still time to find out if you are the winner, but what do you think worked for you the most? I think the, the whole process helped a whole lot because it made me look into more than just what I thought was necessary. It made me see that there's much more to uh, having a good business than just having a good plan. All right. Well, best of luck. All right. So we shall see if his idea is built on a solid foundation. Papias, we're about to find out if giving it your all was enough. So best of luck to him. All the contestants have pitched and it's now time for the bench to tally their scores and use them to separate the bottom 10 from the top 10. So will it be the entrepreneur with the heart for career moms or perhaps the young aquaponics hopeful will our e-platform based proposals make it past our first hurdle or will they fall flat we find out after the break keep watching ours is a tale of a remarkable journey embarked on to meet the needs of an ever-changing society from the exhilaration of launching Zambia's first ATMs in 1993 to the jubilation of community banking in 1997, Zanaco's checklist of firsts exhibits our commitment to better banking solutions. First mobile banking services, first online real-time banking, first group scheme loans, first indigenously owned bank. Throughout this journey, our purpose has remained the same, to empower you. We are the People's Bank. Zanaco. Big. Strong. Reliable. Making your dreams come true. Yes, it is possible. Yes, it is possible. We focus on you. Together we go. Yes, it is possible. Government Bank. It's possible. Welcome back. You're still watching The Game Plan Show. I'm your host, Chim Sumuko, and you are just in time to see who makes it to the top 10. Our bench of judges has heard from all our contestants and will tally the contestants' scores. It's important to note that while this is the first time the contestants have pitched to the bench, the judges individually went through each proposal in advance so they could better understand the concept and be able to score the contestants on parameters such as sustainability of the business. As such, scoring is not limited to just the showmanship of these pitches, but also takes into account acumen and viability. Let's cross over to the court and see how our contestants are stacking up after their pitches. So I am holding in my hand um, a list of top 10 finalists and these are uh, in no particular order. Um, the next session uh, allows the judges to rank uh, the top five. But for the sake of the viewers, um, I just wanted to um, give them a bit of detail on what the judges were looking for when they were listening to the, uh, the pitches. Um, the first thing was the entrepreneur, their passion, their energy and, and, and dedication. They were scored on the business idea itself, um, its innovation, the value addition and ability to create jobs in the future. Uh, they were also scored on the market. Can it uh, compete and win customers? Are the sales realistic? Um, 
uh, the judges were also looking at the operational plan. Is it credible? Is it executable? Um, is it efficient? And uh, clearly the financials were a big part of what the judges were looking for. Is it profitable? Um, is there liquidity um, to sustain itself beyond the initial setup? And the last part of the scoring looked at um, the pitch itself. Um, and so judges, um, here we are uh, with a, a list of the, the top 10. Uh, exciting, isn't it? Now you have a chance to um, tell us your top five, um, you rank them and uh, yeah, let's see whether we can uh, zero down on the top five uh, in, no, uh, in no particular order at this point. I'll start with uh, Judge Chisha, your top five. Uh, in no particular order, my top five were Chiluba Musanshi, Peter Nawa, Edith Sosala, um, Lungo Tumbeko, and the last one was Bernard Kamwenshi. Okay, uh, Charles, any names sound familiar with your list there? Yeah, there's a little bit of resonance. Um, I've got in my top five uh, Chenge Mwenachanya, uh, Bernard Chamwenweshi, uh, Peter Nawa, um, Munanshi, Musanshi Chiluba, and Lungwe Stumbeko. Okay, um, Judge Rocky. Your five. I have Banda Papias, mm -hmm. Edith Sosala, Bernard Kamweneshe, mm -hmm. uh, Andrew Nguvu, mm -hmm. and Lungo Stumbeko Lungoe. Mm, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the maths in my head, but le let me wait for the other two judges. Judge Regina? I've got uh, Stumbeko Lungoe, or Lungoe Stumbeko. I've got uh, Musanshi Chiluba. I've got uh, Peter Nawa. I have uh, Bernard Kamweneshe and uh, Edith Sosal. Hmm. Interesting, Judge Ayman. Yeah, uh, I... Surprises, or...? <laughs> I've got the uh, Stumbeko Lungowe, mm -hmm. Chiluwa Musanshi, mm -hmm. um, Nguvu Andrew, mm -hmm. Nawa Peter, mm -hmm. and the Mwenechanya uh, Chenje. Judges, we need to now zero down on the top five um, and we're getting closer to having to rank them in a particular order. Uh, but for now, you um, presented your top five and it was not in any particular order. Uh, but what I would like to hear you uh, do now is to discuss so that we zero down on that, um, that five. Clearly, there are some um, uh, contestants that scored very well, really high, um, based on your scores. So um, maybe we start with uh, Judge Amun. Um, we're trying to get to the top five now. Yeah. Um, for me, I think uh, there was a lot of consensus on uh, uh, Stumbeko Lungowe. Okay. So I would propose Stumbeko Lungowe to, to proceed unless they are... Uh, do we... Judges, do you... What are, what are your Unless there are objections from other judges. I, I support that. Uh, I, okay. I, I support that too. Okay, okay, great. Support it as okay. well. Okay. Um, Unanimous. You imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> it makes, makes life so much easier. Um, Judge Charles? I think for me the next one to go through is uh, Mushroom Farmer, uh, Musanshi. Musanshi. Okay. Um, Judge Regina? Um, well, how do you rate or do you have Musanshi on your top five? I have um, Musanshi on my top five and okay. I have no objection for her to proceed. Okay, uh, other judges, could yes, we go ahead and, and, and put her? Okay. Um, Judge Rocky? Um, I think my next one is uh, Andrew Nguvu. Okay. I'm doing the village chickens. I object. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 for me, as I said, when during the discussion, the, the business plan uh, sort of review that I did, and even post sort of uh, scoring, th there wasn't much in there. Uh, he's just yet another chicken farmer producer. So I think that there are other contestants that are, you know, who could use that capital much more productively. Mm. I beg to differ actually because I think the key component for him is the village chicken. We had another contestant where we agreed it sounded more like a broiler chicken and the fact that he's actually already doing the business, I think it's issues of scaling up but it's a different type of chicken from the mass market of uh, the, the chickens that we have right now. Okay, so we've got three uh, judges. Um, advocating for Andrew and we've got two. Let's put him there for now. 
I think we're still going down the list. Let's see if he will fall off or he will stay on. Um, Judge Charles, did you have anyone else in your top five? Um, yes, I've got uh, Peter Nauer, the sort of publishing uh, program, uh, okay. looking to try and sort of stimulate the, uh, the sort of writing uh, capacity in, in Zambia mm -hmm. and basically trying to package the whole editorial process. Okay, your thoughts? Uh, Peter gets uh, my vote. Okay. Uh, I think uh, it's innovative uh, what he wants uh, to do and uh, trying uh, to bring out our talent in other young uh, uh, writers and also increase uh, the reading uh, culture in uh, this uh, country. And uh, when you look at uh, the prize money, I think it's just about enough uh, to get him uh, really uh, getting uh, to the next level. Okay, Judge Rocky, your um, thoughts on Peter? I would say no. Uh, my, my, my thoughts were based on the fact that I didn't think that the, the, the critical mass for this type of business actually exists in Zambia. Um, anyone you still want to be in the top five? On this one, I would like uh, to have uh, Bernard Kamweneshe to be among uh, the top five in that he's already in uh, the business, he has uh, the experience, uh, his uh, biggest uh, challenge is uh, capital. And I think uh, this will um, uh, help him, um, uh, you know, increase his uh, production uh, capacity and uh, reach out and uh, ease in uh, education. And uh, we are looking uh, to making a difference in the education sector. So I would want uh, to propose that uh, Bernard uh, be considered uh, to remain in uh, the top five. Okay, your thoughts? I disagree totally. <laughs> I don't think he should be in the top five. That market, I believe, is saturated. And he was not very clear which part or which sector he's, which part of uh, the education process he's actually going to hone in on. He's doing too much, that's what I believe. I feel if we gave him this money, he will probably expand and do do much better. So for me, it's a yes. Judge Amon, it, did we leave anybody out in the top five that you would like to see there? Uh, actually, uh, the score, when the Chanya change very high, Okay. I would have loved that to be in the top five, but again, when you having reflected and look at our business proposal, which is very brilliant, mm -hmm. and I believe there's a market out there, and I believe she'll be very successful mm -hmm. if she did the right thing. Uh, but again, look at the issue of injecting 250,000. This is the business where you don't need money to mm -hmm. start. Mm -hmm. She just needs her personality and the contacts, probably a laptop. She doesn't even need a an office uh, building, she can work from home, uh, just needs a laptop and a car and a telephone. Okay. Yeah, so uh, okay. and as far as I scored uh, highly, but I'll not push her to the top five. Okay, did anybody else have Chenge? I did actually, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised that you, you're <laughs> dropping her like a hot cake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the items that you talked about, laptop, phone, you know, transport, are the sort of capital sort of injection that she requires. And I think actually, you know, from, a, my own experience, and B, the experience of, of expats that have come through, I think that service is in huge demand. And I think that uh, her pitch was well thought out. I think that uh, the consolidation of all the types of services that you know, expats require, or even anyone else coming to the country, yeah. diaspora as well, yeah, I, I agree you know, she can you. really touch into a whole new market. Yeah, I agree with you, Charles. Uh, having worked in different countries myself, you really need this service. But when I look at uh, who requires money among us the, all these people who, have, who, who requires the money most among us all these people who have looked at really after soul searching uh, should be at least on my I list. didn't vote for her but it shouldn't be about who needs the money more it's uh, who's got uh, the idea that uh, will make her uh, the most uh, difference and uh, impact but we're still nowhere near coming having the top five <laughs> because well, on, on my trade. sheet yeah. <laughs> I would propose that maybe we include her and then we can have a yeah, further then discussion can, exactly. and then drop another yeah. two. Um, uh, the discussion is um, who to drop off um, and uh, there was a debate, you were debating, uh, we agreed or you agreed that Chenge falls off so now we have Andrew, who also had a couple of question marks, and Edith, who had a couple of question marks. So between Andrew and Edith, one of the two has to drop for you to um, come up with your top five. So I'm just going to go through each judge. Um, uh, judge Amon, uh, Andrew or Edith? I'll drop uh, Edith. You'll drop Edith? Who will you drop? Okay, I'll, I'll sadly drop uh, Edith because uh, she didn't get her numbers right. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, I'll, I'll drop Edith as well. Okay. I'll, I'll go for Andrew going through. Okay. 
unfortunately, both were in my top five. So this is a tough one for me. So maybe my love of food. <laughs> I'll drop Edith as well. Okay, so... Um, no hard feelings. No, no hard, hard feelings. Okay. So um, Andrew um, goes into the top five. Okay, so in no particular order, in no particular order, the judges have agreed on the following names to be in the top five. And I repeat, this is in no particular order. Uh, Situmbeko Lungoe, Chiluba Musanshi, Nguvu Andrew, Peter Nawa, and Bernard Kamweneshe. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Is, I haven't made any mistakes on your, on, on your picks. You're spot on. It's spot on. Well, thank you very much, um, judges. This has been an interesting discussion, and uh, there you have it. Um, the top five, but in no particular order at this point. Down to the final five. How will they place, and more importantly, who will walk away with the grand prize of 250,000 kwacha? Find out after the break. <laughs> Success is measured in many ways. Which bank you choose for your business is one of them. Whether you're already established or can see the potential of what could be one day. Barclays Business Banking understands where you want to take your business and what is needed to get you there. A dedicated partner committed to opening doors to growth and success at every stage of your business journey. Open doors. Prosper. to Zambia's fastest 4G network to date. Visit an MTN service center to pick up your 4G SIM card now and get one gigabyte data free. Thank you for staying with us. I'm your host, Chim Sumuko, and this is The Game Plan Show, the last in a series of events that sees the financing of entrepreneurs courtesy of Nyamuka Zambia Business Plan Competition. Before the break, we narrowed our top 10 to just five, and now it is time to see how they are placed, revealing who walks away with the title of 2016 Nyamuka Zambia winner. We've come to the final end of the judging process. The judges have spoken. Um, and in order of ranking, number five, winning a prize money of 125,000 kwacha, goes to Lungowe Situmbeko. Number four, winning a prize money of 150,000 kwacha, goes to Andrew Nguvo. Number three, with a prize money of 175,000 kwacha, is Peter Nawa. And number two, with a prize money of 200,000 kwacha, is Bernard Kamweneshe. And the grand prize of 250,000 kwacha goes to Chiluba Musanshi. This has been the game plan of 2016. Um, there are no losers in this game. We want to wish all the contestants um, all the best because they have learned so much and they take away so much. Um, and we look forward to the game plan of 2017. Congratulations to our top five who walk away with 125,000, 150,000, 175,000, 200,000 and 250,000 kwacha respectively. It's been a fantastic season and we look forward to doing it again next year. I've been your host, Chim Sumuko, and this has been the Game Plan Show. So until next time, we leave you with the memories of Nyamuka Zambia 2016. Goodbye. Nyamuka Zambia.